Hey there, folks. I'm Mark, in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse. And yeah, it's the SZA episode. And this, it's Billboard Breakdown. I don't remember. So there are weeks where album bombs are difficult to handle, and thankfully, this is not really one of them. I've already reviewed SZA's album SOS at length on the main channel, go check it out. And considering that it's pretty damn good with very little else going on, it looks like I'm snagging a bit of a break here. At least for a little bit. But anyway, our top 10. Where following off of last week, we still got the most of the holiday bulwark is in place. All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey is firmly at number one. Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree by Brenda Lee is at number two. But immediately, we do have a new arrival that we could have predicted. Coming in really strong on streaming and YouTube, Kill Bill by SZA at number three. Again, we'll talk about it later, but like most streaming album bombs without airplay, it's probably not gonna last but it did get some good penetration, especially as Jingle Bell Rock by Bobby Helms and A Holly Jolly Christmas by Burl Ives are lodged right beneath it at number four and number five, and with Last Christmas by Wham clawing up to number six. Now this overtook Antihero by Taylor Swift, which slid down to number seven, and while it's been making radio gains with solid sales, it's just getting tossed around on streaming right now. Speaking of which, we got more holiday material with It's the Most Wonderful Time by Andy Williams at number eight, which just elbowed over Unholy by Sam Smith and Kim Petras at number 9. Which, yes, does have slightly better radio and sales, but it's losing even harder on streaming. Finally... SZA's second breakthrough in the top 10 with Nobody Gets Me, which actually got a full video. It kind of makes sense as to why. We'll get to it. But it's also nowhere in sight on the radio. I mean, I want to blame RCA for this too, but frankly, they're so slow to work radio records, I guess I should be grateful that they can work any of these at all. Shirt is getting some traction, I guess. We'll look at that. And that nicely takes us to our losers and dropouts. And man, there were some big ones in the latter category. Don't Come Looking by Jackson Dean, Half of Us by Thomas Rhett and Riley Green, Free Mind by Thames, Fall in Love by Bailey Zimmerman, Wait for You by Future, Thames and Drake, I Like You, A Happier Song by Post Malone featuring Doja Cat, hell, and even Wasted on You by Morgan Wallen. And speaking of which, Morgan Wallen did see other losses for both of his debuts last week, with One Thing at a Time falling down to 81, and Tennessee fans sliding to 99, as well as You Proof going down to 49, but the big story here is Metro Boomin's fading album bomb. Superhero, Heroes and Villains with Future and Chris Brown at 34. Too Many Nights with Don Tolliver and Future at 68. Niagara Falls, Foot or Two with Travis Scott and 21 Savage at 71. Umbrella with Young Nudie and 21 Savage at 74. Raindrops, Insane with Travis Scott at 77. On Time with John Legend at 85. Trance with Travis Scott and Young Thug at 90. Metro Spider with Young Thug at 91, and Around Me with Don Tolliver at 98. Then we had some continued losers, starting with the Drake and 21 Savage album bomb leftovers like Major Distribution down to 100, or On BS at 96, and Circo Loco at 87, but also Tomorrow 2 by Glorilla and Cardi B's at 57, Super Freaky Girl by Nicki Minaj down to 56, Something in the Orange by Zach Bryan at 53, Lift Me Up by Rihanna at 51, and Under the Influence by Chris Brown at 45. And now... The rest. All Mine by Brent Fayez at 95. Hold Me Closer by Elton John and Britney Spears at 89. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer by Gene Autry at 47. Because yes, even holiday music gets hit by album bombs. Cuff It by Beyonce at 42. As It Was by Harry Styles at 38. Die For You by The Weeknd at 33. And even Bad Habit by Steve Lacey at 28. This was a doozy, my god. Now, as expected, there wasn't really much in the way of returns outside of a couple holiday songs sneaking back in. Santa Claus is Coming to Town by the Jackson 5 at 48, and Run Rudolph Run by Chuck Berry at 46. And in our gains, okay, why did Blue Christmas by Kane Brown actually get traction at 84? There's not even still a pirated version of this on YouTube. I'm fairly certain my review of it last week gave it more coverage than pretty much anything else. But while Escapism by Ray featuring 070 Shakes on an intriguing boost off the debut to 79, the story this week, it's SZA. And as I said before, Shirt, as expected, saw a surge up to 18. And given her album bomb delivered 20 songs to the Hot 100, she is very much in album bomb territory. So I'm going to be focusing on the best, the worst, and those in the top 20. Outside of that, 
well, Forgiveless with the late Old Dirty Bastards at 76, Too Late at 62, Far at 61, F2F at 55, Open Arms with Travis Scott at 54, Smoking on My X Pack at 52, Notice Me at 44, Special at 37, SOS at 32, Used with Don Tolliver at 30, Snooze at 29, Seek and Destroy at 24, and Love Language at 21. But unfortunately, SZA wasn't the only act who charted new songs this week, because we gotta start off with... Number 97, Water Drowning Part 2 by A Boogie With The Hoodie featuring Kodak Black. I need two or three, just you and me that might get bored. I don't fuck with hoes that make up stories, not so far. Okay, honest question. Forget asking whether people were missing new music from A Boogie. How many people even noticed that he was gone? At this point, he's been lapped by so many of other contemporaries and rap and trap music that I'm not even surprised he's returning to working with Kodak Black to recapture the memories of a song from five years ago that unironically had a disturbingly catchy hook. It is one of the few songs that I can actually kind of tolerate that has Kodak Black on it. Now this is not nearly as good, mostly because the sing-song flow has been swapped out for more rapping, where A Boogie's trying to sound a little bit more visceral, or singing his higher register on the hook. And look, you can't sell any of it, especially when the piano is so drowned out behind some painfully cheap and brittle sounding percussion. But the larger problem, once again, is that A Boogie with the Hoodie is a frustratingly anonymous performer, and any attempt to really change that feels kind of laughable. Like when he compares himself to Biggie Smalls and it's all the brand name porn on his verse, or how on the hook he says, if the girl cheats on him, he'll fuck her best friend. But also how he's spending thousands of dollars at strip clubs and don't tell his baby mama. I mean, you put it on the song, but classy. Now, for what it's worth, Kodak's actually just pretty forgettable here. Not a smart idea to be ejaculating inside so many women, dude. But it's just not enough to save this, even just being anonymous and forgettable. This is mediocre at best. Let's move on. Number 58, Conceited by SZA. No reason to my friends, I'm go over. I got no reason to depend. So in my review of the album, this song was highlighted as my least favorite. The other one that came close to charted in the top 20, we will get to it. But this also feels like such an obvious label concession to make something somewhat happy go viral on TikTok in the cheapest way possible. The painfully thin trap skitters, the fake claps, the bass that floods the low end, and SZA trying for more of a flex that could actually have some legs on its own, but isn't remotely convincing in the context of the album, mostly because it's it's a I'm not rad really song, which through all the behavior that she describes on the track highlights how it is all still really getting to her. She's not shaking it off. It's trying to sound dismissive and above it all. And look, I don't buy it. We're even coasting on ego and being conceited. It's, it's flimsy. It's not precisely a bad song because kind of catchy, but again, least favorite on the album. Let's move on. Number 43, Gone Girl by SZA. Yeah. You better learn how to face this she's gone Now this is the great stuff. The spare pianos, terrific gospel multi-tracking that builds swell across the entire song, picking up that soulful bass line and snap, even as SZA presses against her falsetto. It does get kind of obvious how much her engineers and producers put so many effects on her voice where I don't really think she needs them. And like the power ballad that this is, we actually get a real key change. She knocks it out of the park. And I really like the lyrics here too. The title Gone Girl is kind of loaded given the tone and the darkness of that movie and some of its twist, but SZA taps into the loneliness and the grief that comes with having to make that decision to just end it all. A moment of self-sabotage where she's not even fully clear what she wants in this relationship, even as she sees folks emulate her, but it's just that it's not this. And man, just an excellent song. I wish the album was better equipped to pay it off, just saying. Number 40, Ghost in the Machine by SZA featuring Phoebe Bridgers. Humanity, Look, 
here's another one. Now, when I heard about Phoebe Bridgers working with SZA, yeah, it made a ton of sense given their very organic roots and complicated moral framing and occasionally frustrating production. But they take a much angrier tack with this song, which is quite interesting. The guitars are plucky, a little bit more minor key. The vocals are very ethereal. The bassy swells bounce out against the fizzy percussion and the haunted frustration so well as SZA will just rip into the music industry that doesn't protect her so much as just seeking to commodify, exploit her, and then discard her. The reference to AI that will not recapture that same unique rough humanity. It's very telling. But I gotta be honest, uh, Phoebe Bridgers kind of steals the song with a much more pointed call out of those who will question her real life friendships, especially in Boy Genius, that she helps support to say nothing of the crushing loneliness that comes with the monotony of touring, which can kind of feel like being trapped inside a soulless machine that will just grind down the humanity that they need to make art and then make money. Again, absolutely excellent song, where even the sad guru quote at the very end, it works for me. I wish more of the album was like this. Just saying. Number 17, Low by SZA. I need you to get the fuck on my space. Now, I'll admit I'm a little bit surprised how much I like this. It's SZA on a bassy, eerie trap groove that might as well just put Travis Scott on it with a verse proper for all the ad-libs and swampy, overcompressed production, especially around her vocals. It is kind of distracting. But there's a little bit of swing and menace to the groove here that I really like, especially as SZA can very easily sell sexual provocation with a guy that she knows is nowhere near good enough for her, but she's going to use him now for casual sex. She's almost embarrassed to be seen anywhere around him and that slightly more complicated contempt it's an emotion that SZA can sell really effectively so okay yeah I'm not gonna put this among the top tier of SZA songs from SOS but this is great in a low-key way it's gonna go underrated check it out number 12 blind by SZA This is the other song I didn't really like as much on SOS, and by far the more contentious opinion because I've seen this as a fan favorite. And yeah, I get it. SZA's faster flow against the gentle acoustics and the welling strings, it almost reminds me of No Name in a really good way, especially in its very pivy, downbeat self-awareness, and how going through so much should have her better than this, especially in the context of a relationship that deep down she knows it's probably doomed, but you can't get past it. There's something about this that leaves her blind to it all. She keeps going back. And to showcase all that, they ram her voice through a bunch of chipmunk filters right at the very front of the mix for the post-chorus and for a lot of vocal runs that just sound dreadful. It raises the hairs on the back of my neck. It sounds awful. So yeah, okay, outside of that, I'd recommend this. I don't think it's pretty, but otherwise, sorry, I can't. Number 10, Nobody Gets Me by SZA. Alright, I'm not surprised that the label seems to be pushing this as a single of some kind. The gentle 2000s era acoustic pop guitars, that, especially with the vocal multi-tracking, I can't shake a loose comparison to Avril Lavigne on a cut like Keep Holding On, but with a more stripped down arrangement, that works. But yeah, SZA is the star of the show here. Even if the vocal mixing isn't quite as sharp as it should be, her heartbreak and ending a real relationship with her ex-fiance is palpable. Where the proposal ultimately fell through, she knows that she should move on, but there's just way too much history that she's not over. Any guy she's with now, she sees him. Just a really sad, potent song. Uh, again, I get why they're pushing it, and that's pretty great. And finally, number three, Kill Bill by SZA. Why am I not surprised that this seems to be the song that most people seem to have gotten behind? The eerie, off-key melody that leads into the bassy, tapping percussion and slightly snarled guitars, as SZA has such a playful menace about talking about killing her ex and his new girlfriend, where any belief that she's so mature, it's very clearly ironic. Especially when it seems like said ex is the actual real mature one having moved on. So yeah, okay, it's a very dark joke, but it's a well-executed one, and SZA can sell it, but I don't know. I'm not 
not as big of a fan of this because it feels like SZA is being kind of cute with this in a way that's not quite as interesting as it could be, especially as I can clearly tell it was built to go viral on TikTok. I just hear the artifice of all that. So yeah, okay, fine song, but there are better ones on the album we could elevate, just saying. And that was the week. Not that long for an album bomb. Nice. Anyway, SZA is obviously taking the best for Gone Girl with honorable mention as Ghost in the Machine with Phoebe Bridgers, but she's also getting the dishonorable mention for Conceited. Worst of the week is obviously going to Water Drowning Part 2 by A Boogie with the Hoodie and Kodak Black. It's not like that choice was difficult. Now next week, the fallout, and likely pretty muted as we're probably going to be knee-deep for the holiday season. Stay tuned for that. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.